Welcome to my podcast, What the Fuck Spirit. If you made it past that name, this is going to be the podcast for you. This is going to be a no holds barred, no bullshit, open and honest conversation with Maria Leggett, and that's me, about all things spiritual. It's time to begin talking in an open and honest way about what spirituality is and what it is not. We're going to discuss all things woo-woo, witchcraft, spiritual, queer spirituality, medium versus psychic, energy healing, light work, shadow work, and any other bullshit that people want you to believe because it keeps them comfortable. It is time for you to grow. Let's go. All right. Hello and thank you everybody for joining us today. I am so excited to be able to talk to Melanie Hustis. I am I love being able to talk to other people who work with energy and I really love talking to people who have a mouth like mine. <laughs> you know, not everybody says fuck and to me it's a really important word. It's like the best F word ever. Yes. So Melody is an energy alchemist with a big heart and a mouth to match. She is passionate about cats, potato chips, and authentic human connection. We have so much in common. I love my cats. Who she doesn't? Works alongside spirit to help people align with their true gifts, heal what is holding them back, and learn how to show up passionately to their own damn lives. The one thing she wishes everyone could embrace is is that where you are now is exactly where you are meant to be and a powerful stepping stone to fulfilling your life's true mission. Oh my God. I literally feel like you should write my bio. Sure. <laughs> I'm here for it. We could just oh share. <laughs> like I literally could have just copied that and made it mine just because I, you know, it's so important that people understand that where you are right now, it's, you're there for a purpose. Yes. And we need to stop expecting ourselves to be so much more. We need to start doing all of this and all of that. And I loved how you went on and did a story yesterday and said, you know, we're going to talk about the darkness. Mm -hmm. I get this is a, a massive, massive pet peeve of mine. These people who walk around going, oh, it's all light and love. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Really? Do you really think it's all light and love? Because it's really not. Like, where are you living? I'd love to know that. Exactly. Like, what yeah. world did you step into that there's no darkness? Because let me tell you something, sister. If you're not stepping deep down into your shit, there's no way you can find your light. Well, exactly. It just doesn't exist. So I'm super excited to have all these conversations. So um, I read your bio, but I want to hear from you. How do you describe yourself? How do you describe what you do? <laughs> Give me all the things. Okay. I hate describing myself and things that I do. And every time I do so, it's different. The reason, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. I will, first I'll share that I'm an energy alchemist, as you already shared. And what I primarily do is I help people find their own power to shift what isn't working in their lives from lead into gold, right? From the dark into the light, what yes. we're going to be talking about today. I do it through helping people embrace and learn about their own spiritual gifts. I think we're all empaths. We're all psychics. We're all connected. We just do it in slightly different ways. Correct. Through trauma healing. We all have trauma. I don't care who you are, how you grew up, you've got something holding on and uh, we need to release that in order to be able to fully be who we are meant to be. And then through just finding your own true expression, your authenticity, because nothing chaps my ass more than seeing someone showing up in the world, trying to be something that they're not. Yes huge pet peeve. So it's those three things is finding yourself and the bravery that might be required in order to show up in that way in the world, healing all of that stuff that is no longer serving you using your connection to source, to God, to spirit, whatever you want to call it. And then showing up. Yeah. Everything just, everything's different. I know, you know, everything is different when you do those things everything like yeah. everything in your life is going to shift and change the minute that you start admitting this is my trauma this is where i came from this is what happened yeah. but as long as you're sitting in denial all the time there's nothing that you can alchemize you're just standing yeah. in your shit well when you're denying the truth when you're denying the dark when you're denying anything you're denying yourself i agree so I if you want to heal if you want to shift if you want to create 
whatever it is you want to do, you have to accept who you are, where you are, what's going on. And then you have the power to change it if you want to. Yes. You know, before I ever even started on this spiritual path, I had someone, we were having a whole conversation. It was like some work topic or something we were doing. And um, the speaker had said, what do you think it means to be brave? And, you know, of course I was in the corporate world at the time. And of course, men were saying all kinds of things Mm -hmm. and they looked at us and they said, no, what brave means is that you're scared shitless, but you're going to do it anyway. That's what brave means. And I sat there and I went, oh my God. (laughs) It's true. Yeah. It's like, that's a, that massively opened things up for me and gave me permission at that point to be scared, which is why, you know, at the beginning of the podcast, whenever I hit the record button, I'm just, (laughs) I freeze. My throat chakra goes, guess what? Yeah. And it closes up and then I can't talk. I can't think. And I just get stuck. And it's because this expectation of you have to be perfect. Right. Says who? Exactly. Right. And, you know, why do I have to be perfect? Where do you know, and where does that come from? And then I have to remind myself, nah, bitch, you're brave. Yeah. You can do this. <laughs> and don't you find or believe that expectation really it's the root of suffering. My belief is that any type of suffering we're going through, whether that's physical, mental, emotional, global, collective, it's when we believe that what is currently happening is different than what we think should, what we expected to be. Yeah. You know, it's funny as I'm listening to you talk, I can hear my spirit guides go, okay, that word expectation, like that's where some of the darkest parts of you exist. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I'll say in expectation, a lot of the time, it's not even our darkest parts. It's the darkest parts of our parents, of society, of the collective, of the stories that we've been fed consistently throughout our life yeah. that we take on as our own yes. and we avoid because we're terrified that it says something about us. Yes. But when you strip it down, a lot of the time it's not even yours. You don't even have to carry it anymore. No. And that's the thing. Like, that's what I work with my one-to-one clients, right? Doing the spiritual mentoring and coaching them through things. It's like, look, let's, let's start to figure out what is yours and what's not yours. And they're like, what do you mean? Well, there's a whole lot of truths that you're carrying that aren't your truths or somebody else's. So we have to stop allowing other people's lies to become our truth. Yes. And we're done with this. Yeah. And I try to describe it as people as having like a rope, right? You have this rope because rope is made with all these different things that are twisted together. And I always envision those three, right? What came from the maternal side, what came from the paternal side, and then there's you wrapped in, wrapped amongst all of this. And it's peeling away so that you can sit in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) I hope that this video gets shared because that was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I do. I will put the video on YouTube. Okay, good. (laughs) You won't won't see it on the podcast. So for anybody who's not watching the video, I I use my index finger as mom, my ring finger as dad, and the middle finger is you. And when we strip them away, you're just flipping people off. Fuck yeah. (laughs) So talk to me. Like, I want to know, I want to know all your feelings, all the things that you have to say about the darkness. I love that. Give it all to me. Oh, all of it. Okay. So where to start? I will say, I believe that the darkness is where the healing happens. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was trying to think of some examples because I am really good at receiving information and energy and I'm not so great at verbally expressing it. Yeah. (laughs) And what I came down to was think of being in the womb. It is completely dark, Mm -hmm. right? And you are secluded and you are alone. And that is where life begins. Mm -hmm. That is where growth begins. That is where expansion begins. And then another example I thought of was when a storm comes in, everyone wants a sunny day, but when the storm comes in and the clouds come in and it gets really, really dark, what happens? It rains. And that brings nourishment to the earth, to the soil. Yeah. And that creates new growth, expansion, new life. And so we have this idea for some fucked up reason that the dark is a bad thing. But it's truly where life begins and it's where our healing begins. Absolutely. I think we really need to have these conversations so that people 
can release that fear and be willing to lean in to the not so savory parts of themselves, the ugly parts, the shameful parts, the embarrassing parts, mm -hmm. because until we can do that, there really isn't room for the light, right? This, we talked in the beginning, how that love and light, love and light, how it's <laughs> where you live in, right? I, I have yes. not experienced that in this lifetime. Um, and when I first got into healing in the spiritual community, I mean, I was all like, oh, I'm just going to meditate. I'm going to manifest. I'm going to mm -hmm. sit in the sunshine. And it was lovely until it wasn't. And the thing with focusing on the light, not that we don't want the light. Of course we want the light. It's, it is another beautiful part of who we are and how we are meant to be. But when you just sit in the light, it's temporary mm -hmm. because we are always brought back to the dark, right? We are yeah. always pulled back under because there's work for us there. And if we can just stop resisting and dive in and do the work and see what's there, the light doesn't have to keep leaving and coming back. So it's kind of like a, a paradoxical experience in that in order to truly experience long-term light, positivity, health, happiness, whatever it is you're calling in, you really need to stay in the dark. You do. It's funny because as I was listening to you say all those things, right, about the mother's womb and the storms you know, even firefighters do controlled burns in the forest yes. to encourage growth because sometimes it gets stagnant and things aren't growing. So they'll do a controlled burn to, you know, reinvigorate the forest and get the, the growth coming back. And one of the things, one of my spirit guides that I worked with being deep down into the darkness, I was like really deep into a depression and I say they are a spirit guide, but it's actually Hakate, which is... <laughs> Very, she will take you into the darkness, like drag oh, you, yeah. kicking and screaming right down into the darkness. And as I'm down there, she looked at me and very clearly had said to me, you know, you need this woman. You need this woman who understands the darkness. You need this woman because she understands it. She is the one who is going to protect you. She is the one who's got this knowledge and this wisdom so far deep in her belly that when you experience something, she's going to raise her ire inside of you and say, bitch, don't listen to that. Yeah. And the I'm dark like, is oh powerful. It is. It is. And we need to stop ignoring it, right? We need to stop ignoring it. And spending all that time down into the deep dark and working through your junk doesn't mean that you're never going to experience darkness again. And it also doesn't mean that you're not going to experience different layers of the same problem. Yeah, the proverbial because, onion, right? Yeah. And here's the thing. Just because you finish one onion doesn't mean that there's not a new one. <laughs> I bought a whole satchel. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've actually got a truckload around the back if you run out. You know, and uh, I was laughing. I walked out into my garage the other day and we have a we have a little farm. And my husband has this box filled with onions. And I looked down and went, well, that's not my fucking life. <laughs> And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, never mind, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I think a lot of people listening will get that, right? Yeah, because it's it's literally one onion after another. And there are always yeah. different layers to a problem. Just because you pulled back one layer of it doesn't mean that another one's not going to rear its head. So we always have to be open and ready for what is the lesson? What is the lesson? And again, you further to that, you know, saying you you might have to come back to the dark. I still believe that the dark is a great place to be. Yes. And again, it's this idea that, okay, well, even for people who are willing to do their shadow work, okay, they like buckle up, they get ready. They like give themselves a little pep talk. Okay, we're going to go in, we're going to do the dark work. We're going to come out it's going to be awesome. But I actually like being there. I actually enjoy, and people think I'm crazy, but I enjoy going to those lower vibrational places, going into the pain, into the discomfort. And it's taken me a long time to really get to that place. But what is so fucking beautiful about it is that because I have gratitude and pleasure in the dark, just as I have gratitude and pleasure in the light and all of the hues in between, I don't have to get over it. 
I don't have to rush through it. I don't have to resist it. And so many people who are actually willing to do their shadow work, they're just holding on until they can get through it. And then they'll be happy and then they'll have the relationship they love. And then they'll call in the business that they're trying to create. And it's creating this pattern of waiting for what you actually want. Mm -hmm. And if we can learn to find what we want in that dark space, as well as in the light, there's no waiting. You have what you need right now, even though it kind of sucks. Yeah. You give yourself permission to have it no matter what shit you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. If I waited for everything to be cool, oh my God, I would not have had a good day. I don't think in my entire life. Yeah. And one of those souls that chose a tough path to walk. And there is so much beauty in that. Yeah. I often wake up and that's literally the reason why I called the podcast, what the fuck spirit, just because (laughs) I look back at my life and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking taking this soul contract on? I mean, seriously. Right? And I have this a lot, dude. Yes. And I have this conversation with so many clients. You may have similar conversations. But what I think happens in part is that when we are in spirit form, before we incarnate into these bodies, when we're creating those soul contracts, when we're having those conversations, I think we forget how hard it is to be human we forget the weight of it we forget the complexity of it the the brainwashing of it and you know say you and I are up in heaven looking down going hey Shelly what are we gonna cook up next lifetime and you're like well I want to work on this and this and this and this and this yeah I'm like perfect I've got you and then we come into human form and then it hits us the reality of being human And then you kind of think maybe one lesson would be (laughs) sufficient, (laughs) right? What was I thinking? Can we not have handled 10? Can I just, let's just give me one. It's all good. Yeah. And so I think those of us who have had a lot of lives, a lot of lives as healers, a lot of lives walking this path of helping others walk the path. I think we tend to take on a lot because then we have such expansive experience with which to support others. I love that. I love that. Do you know how many times you've reincarnated already? I have never asked specifically. I'm not a a numbers, names, details kind of girl. No, Um, but I just mean like, has it been, do you know if it's been a lot of times, not necessarily like thousands, but okay. Thousands for sure. And I remember hundreds of them. And I actually, in my lifetime right now, I have a lot of people who I have incarnated with before and we all have memory of it. So it's actually pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I'm, I'm a little jelly. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. There are two of my soul sisters in particular and the three of us, we come back together all the time and we're still mad at each other for things that happen in other lives. <laughs> and we'll still get a little upset about it from time to time. Uh, So, you know, there's positives and negatives to that memory, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's amazing. I, um, I don't, I don't publicly announce this very often, (laughs) probably because I struggle with it so much, just because when I first started down the spiritual journey, I was positive that I knew of, you know, this many, and I'd met people from all of these different lives. And then um, I did a QHHT session and found out this is actually my first lifetime as a human. Okay. But you still have experience over lifetimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's just the first time I've ever come down to earth. I had, you know, tons of other ones, Yeah. Um, but I was mortified and I'm like, well, why the hell did I pick such a difficult one? Could, yeah. Could I not have taken a, <laughs> Hey, let's just be easy on her. <laughs> well, do you want to know why? Or do you know why? Maybe you I do know it. why. Cause my guides are telling me. Oh no, go ahead, please. Listen, if you're getting information, I'm, mm. I am open to receive. Oh, I totally get information 24 seven, but, and you know, this it's because you're needed here right now. And I will say to everyone listening, you are in exactly the life that you are in because you are needed right here, right now. Yeah. I completely agree with you on that. I love that. That's your thing, right? You're exactly where you need to be right now. Um, you know, when I was deep in all of my shit so many years ago, I would have, I would have been my not ideal client 
<laughs> who was completely stuck and just went, oh, you're fucking crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Deuces. I'm out. Um, but along this way, I've had to like really quickly shed my very Christian upbringing, being able to shed all kinds of things because I'm publicly, you know, speak about having been molested for three years as a little girl, having been physically abused by another person in the family. And these are like two completely different people and just lots of different stuff that's happened to me over my lifetime. And, you know, I look back at all of those things and I ask spirit, I'm like, okay, why did this happen? And they're like, listen, you know, this person is so amazing that they came in to do these horrible things to you so that you could meet other women who were just like that. And the law of attraction existed. And I'm like, I really thought that was cool. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you brought this up because if we want to go really into the dark, which I don't normally talk about this either, but I feel like we're being guided to go there. Jeez that I truly don't believe in good or bad, right or wrong. I don't, I don't believe that evil exists. I believe we put our own judgment on certain beliefs, actions, systems, people to make us feel safe, to make us feel in control. And all of the things that happen that we would label as evil, they are still happening for us. Yeah. And we taught, you're talking about those soul contracts and you're right. Like I too, I have been sexually assaulted numerous times. I have been abused. I have had a laundry list of things happen. And I know that those people, like you said, they agreed in soul form to help me learn my lesson. Yeah. And I honestly believe that it's probably harder for them to yes. show up and do that than it is for us to receive it. And I hesitate to say that because I don't want to make anyone's experience minimized. But from what I have learned from those experiences has given me the most power in my life, the most forgiveness, the most healing. And I'm not wishing it on anyone. I never no. would. I'm not saying it's okay. Just because I'm not labeling it as good or bad doesn't mean I think it's okay or justified. I don't. But if you have had a dark experience, an evil experience, there is absolutely gold in there for you if you can figure it out. I don't disagree with you. And it's funny, I, not funny, haha, -ha, but ironic because I also have a difficult time sharing that exact same thing that you just said, because what you just said, I absolutely identify with. I, I am 100 right there with you mm -hmm. because can you imagine what it's like to be this beautiful, wonderful, perfect soul who says, hey, I'm going to agree to come down there and molest this little girl and I'm going to have people think that I'm evil and I'm going to have my family hate me, but I have to do this so that I can elevate her to where she needs to be in her lifetime. That's, That's a I sacrifice. Mean, that is a massive sacrifice. And so, and again, just like what you said, I'm not saying that I expect anybody else to believe as me. So if you're listening to this and you've been molested or sexually assaulted and you're still angry at your at your perpetrator, that is between you and them that you have to work out with. And I don't want you to feel like I'm saying that he was perfectly wonderful and acceptable because he did it. That's not it at all. Part of your lesson is to work through forgiveness, right? We have to be able to forgive them because if we don't, we're just holding ourselves back. Yes, I think it's really, I do agree, but I think it's really important, at least for me to note that forgiveness, again, doesn't mean it's okay. Oh, no, not at all. Doesn't mean you're still willing to have them in your life. Correct. All forgiveness is, is you taking that heaviness, that darkness that they gave you at the beginning, we talked about how a lot of the darkness is yes. yours. They Correct. gave that to you. Yep. Forgiveness is you refusing to carry that shit for them anymore. Amen putting it down. Yep. And I just like to clarify that because I know when I was trying to forgive and yeah. I was still so fucking angry and I still have anger. I probably will have some anger until the day I die and we meet in spirit form and clear yeah. it all up, but I can be angry and I can forgive. Absolutely. I, right. And so it's very nuanced and individual individualized rather. It really is. I don't disagree with you. And it's funny, like I just had this conversation with my brother last night. Um, I was talking about how I had forgiven the man who molested me because he is DNA related to me. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I said, but it doesn't mean that, you know, I said, I hope that he, that literally, this is what I said. I said, I hope that he reincarnates as a cockroach and I get to step on him. <laughs> I fully support that. <laughs> and my brother says, well, it doesn't sound like you've got a whole lot of forgiveness going on there. So I'm like, listen, dude, just because I forgave oh, yeah. him doesn't mean that I'm not pissed. <laughs> exactly. And this is something else that I think we really avoid and is so important to our healing journeys is getting ugly, getting nasty, getting dark ourselves. Yeah. Right. So part of me clearing the energy of that abuse out of my physical body was doing annihilation work. And I would visualize mm -hmm. chopping that fucker up into little pieces, yes. feeding parts of himself to him. Like I took out all of my rage, all of my ugliness, all yes. of this darkness out on him. And there's this belief that, well, then you're going to be a bad person, or then you're putting the, the evil onto them or whatever the expect, again, expectation is. Mm -hmm. But when we go to the darkest places that are, we are capable of ourselves and we honor, embrace that, that heals everybody, but we resist yes. it, right? We do. Like, I don't want to admit that I, I want to chop someone up into little pieces. I'm actually okay admitting that <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't be. Oh, yes. I'm no, I it. And the thing is, is that it's it's part of our healing journey. Because if we, get, if we get your anger out that way, you mm -hmm. visualize it, you feel it. And then it's just, it's gone. You're not holding it anymore. Yeah. So there's I mean, absolutely nothing wrong for any woman, any man who's listening to this, who's yes. been, you know, violated in whatever way it was, whether it was emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, I don't care what it was. Yeah. You are absolutely well within your rights and your mind to go wherever you need to go to heal that. Yes. The difference is that it stays in your mind and on paper that you don't physically act on it. We don't do that. Well, I will say we do need to physically act on it, but we do not physically act on another person. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. So some of the best ways to move that energy out of your body is through physical movement. Oh, yeah. So at our house, we have an ax and wood in the backyard. You want to wring someone's fucking neck, you go outside, you put on your safety goggles, you imagine their face on the wood yes. and you chop that wood. Yes. Right. And there's so many different ways you can do this. But again, I was told, well, it's not good to be violent, but you know what? Being violent in a safe space, not with anyone else being involved, but it's just energy being released. And if you hold that into your physical body because you don't think it's okay, you're holding that pain, that trauma, that darkness in your body forever. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why you have all these smash rooms in yes. the States that are so yeah. popular because you can go there and just start throwing things and just feel so much better. Like throw it, take the sledgehammer, beat it up. You know, yes. um, my husband and I, we bought a house back in 2001 and it needed to have the sidewalks redone. Oh. And <laughs> I can imagine and, where you're going. <laughs> yeah. So I took the sledgehammer and I went, okay. This, <laughs> this block of concrete right here that needs to go away, this is my ex-husband. And I remembered every difficult thing that he put my children through, every difficult thing that he put me through. I imagined um, the, the wives, the, not the wives, the, the faces of the women that weren't me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just slammed, slammed it. And I was just, I mean, it was just breaking up into pieces. And when I was done, oh. I felt so good and because it's cathartic, it's cathartic for us to do this because what you're doing is you're working that darkness out, working it out, working it out and just boom, yeah. gone. And you work it out and what's left space for the light to come in. Absolutely. That's and then how you, when you find the light. Right. And then when you see that person, I mean, I can't speak for you personally with your ex, but for me, when I do that type of work with someone that has hurt me, when I see them again, there's no more hate. There's no more anger. Again, yeah, there's not necessarily acceptance for what was, but um, because it's all out of me. And then I can yeah. make beautiful aligned choices. Do I want this person in my life anymore? If so, what are my boundaries going to be? And we can't do that when we're still holding on to that pain. No, I completely agree with you. 
And it's beautiful, truly, to be able to step into that and just allow yourself to feel it. Scream, holler. You know, I do these women's circles where I, I will put on um, Rage Against the Machine. Oh, perfect. <laughs> where we scream, you know, you just scream and you let it out and you punch a pillow. You know, mm. if you have a punching bag, hit the punching bag, whatever it is, because it really moves stuck energy out of your body. Yeah. So it's definitely important that you use your physical body to move these things through. Just, you know, you don't want to go up and punch the person who hurt you because no. we're adults, we can get arrested. There's all that. Yeah. I, we were in full agreement on that. <laughs> don't put it on anyone else. And even if it's verbal, like screaming and yelling at someone is not going to help. Scream and yell into the ethers out in the woods in a yes. beautiful sacred woman's circle where yes. it is. Okay. Yeah. But and that's one of the things that I loved. I love being able to do that, right? Scream it out, let it go because the universe can transmute that energy into whatever somebody needs. Yeah. I always love to remind myself that mama earth loves shit. Like literally, if you want to grow some plants, dump some shit on it. That's right. That's so, what we use our chicken shit for. <laughs> Perfect example. So shit, again, like the dark breeds growth and new beginnings and new life. So when you let that out, because a lot of people, again, think I don't want to put this into the world. I don't want to share my trauma. But when you put it out, mama earth will take it and she'll grow something beautiful with it. Absolutely. Because that's her job. It's what she does for us. Yes. She provides everything, right? This, this earth provides us with everything that we need to heal everything. And somewhere along the way, we've become convinced that we need all these chemicals to change our lives and make things so much better. When yeah. earth is like, here, I'm gr growing this plant for you. I am growing this mushroom for you. I am growing this for you. Are you going to take advantage of my gifts, of my offerings? And I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Just this past summer, I started my own medicinal herb garden. I love that. And I started making tinctures to heal myself and my family. And it wasn't even a jump from pharmaceuticals to that. I was using homeopathy and I was using natural products, but it hit me that even homeopathy is processed. Even oh, my yeah. vitamin C that I get from the health food store, it's one step further from mama earth. Yeah. So I'm like, how can I get as close to her as possible? Cause you're right. She's our medicine. She and ourselves yeah. is the medicine. And so I started just growing it in my backyard, taking out the middleman. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things, right? I, I explain this to everybody and I talk about it and I'm sure that you believe the same. You were born with everything you need to heal yourself. And I say this all the time because, you know, we can generally and this is coming true because i you know i do qhht sessions now for people and there is such a i don't even want to say synchronicity there's a link between the things that we think and the conditions we've been diagnosed with oh yeah and yeah. people don't want to realize that like the the easiest one for me to tell people is the one that i always use is diabetes if you have been diagnosed with diabetes what does the pancreas do the pancreas produces insulin what is insulin it's sugar it's sweet right so if your pancreas isn't working and you have diabetes that means that there's no sweetness where is the sweetness in your life mm -hmm. you're forgetting that life can be sweet because you're holding on to anger mm -hmm. And in traditional Chinese medicine, anger is held in the liver. So if you've got liver issues, you got some anger Anger's everywhere. <laughs> really? If you're holding on to anger. Oh, it is everywhere. I don't disagree yeah. with you. But so it's just, you know, we need to start letting go of what we believe about ourselves. What do you believe to be true? Like start deep, dipping way down into what do you believe to be true about yourself? Yeah. And unraveling the stories that you've been told that Absolutely. are coloring that belief. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, while I was growing up and all the way into adulthood, while I was in corporate America, um, I always heard, well, you're too whatever, you're too loud, you're too whatever it is. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And 
it, that it just meant that I was rubbing up against somebody else's expectation of me. Well, typically when someone tells us we're too much of anything, it's because they don't feel enough. Yeah. And when we That's show up in all of our fullness, followers. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. So it's, it's a discomfort within themselves and they don't know how to manage it. So they make us smaller so that they can feel better. Yeah. So again, it's not about you. Right. It's interesting. You probably don't know this about me, but I too worked in corporate, not America, but Canada. (laughs) I worked in finance for a decade before I started doing this work. That's where I was. Yeah. We're so, so similar. (laughs) You and I, (laughs) I started in finance. I worked for Bloomberg financial markets for 15 years. Yeah. But you know what? It was necessary to get us to where we are now. I don't disagree. I learned so much. I had a nervous breakdown. I almost lost a baby. Oh my God. I had a nervous breakdown too. (laughs) A lot of people do in that (laughs) environment because it's not normal, natural, or healthy. Right. Um, absolutely. But so many gifts came from, again, that darkness, that struggle, that discomfort Yeah. that when you're ready to lean into it, they just start popping up all over the place. Yes, 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 yes. It's funny. I can look back at it now. Um, I look back at all the situations that led up to me literally standing up in the middle, of, <laughs> the middle of the office and go, fuck you. Fuck this. I have had enough of all of you. Did you do that? I did. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I sure as shit did. And then I left and I got a call from HR that told me I was on administrative leave. <laughs> and you're like, really? <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> oh, that was so nice of them to fill you in, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm I so glad that-, that you finally gotten onto my cart here, friends. Yeah. Yeah. And then it became, you know, you can't come back until you go to therapy, blah, 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 blah. Perfect. I won't come back. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but that's how I got diagnosed with bipolar two disorder, which I don't really have, but it's what I got diagnosed with. Right. And, you know, through therapy and all this other stuff, you just realize you're just being triggered all the time, all day. Yeah. I've been diagnosed with many things over the years as well. None of which are true. No, no. And, but the thing is, is that I, I, I took the bait, I bit the hook and you know, bipolar two disorder runs rampant in my dad's side of the family. And so I just bit it. I took with it, took the meds, did the things, lost all my creative drive. I lost the drive to do everything. Well, but you're on this nice plateau. You're not cycling anymore. No, I'm not. But now I don't feel a fucking thing. Yeah. You know, and only by stepping onto this journey and realizing what spirituality is and how it goes and doing meditation was I able to see I was really just being triggered all the time and of course now I have no diagnoses of it anymore I don't take Mm -hmm. medication I don't do any of that stuff so uh, can I ask you a personal question did you have any entity attachments no okay because in my experience a lot of times with bipolar there's an entity attachment hence the two extremes Yeah, no, I was, it was all truly trauma related. I would absolutely rage out when someone, I was a massive control freak and it was because I needed to be able to control my environment from just where that man would step in and there were just certain things that he would do that I knew what was coming next. Of course you needed to control. It was a healthy adaptation at the time. Yes, it was a massive okay. control thing. And, you know, and the control got me really far up in the company. I made really good money. At the same time, I also lost everything about myself and was just wound up with anxiety, wound up with anger. And so it was just, it was literally just being triggered into this deep trauma multiple times a day. You're a woman. We don't need to listen to you because the financial world is all, it's, you know, the males, it's all power driven by men. And when you're a woman with an idea, it just, it, so yeah, it really triggered me. There was not an entity. So I was fortunate that way. Amazing. I'm so glad that you shifted that. What a beautiful example for others. Me too. It's one of the reasons why I like talking about it 
right? I don't want people to think that just because you have a medical diagnosis doesn't mean that you have to own it. I would beg you, please don't own it. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to dismiss it. It doesn't mean you don't believe it to be true, but it's not who you are. Correct. It is a label that explains a list of symptoms that you are currently experiencing. Yep. And you absolutely have the power to change those symptoms and thereby change that label or get rid of it altogether. Agreed. I don't know what you do with your clients, but one of the things I try to um, work with my clients and express to them is try to shift your, you know, being mindful in your words, mindful in your intention, shift your words and your language so that you don't say, I have fibromyalgia. Just say, I've been diagnosed with it. Yes. Yes. I've been diagnosed. That's all it is. You got diagnosed with it because there's a belief that went behind you being diagnosed with fibro. So now figure out what is that belief? So you can start to shift the belief and shift the condition out of your body. Mm -hmm. 100%. I agree. That's awesome. It, it cracks me up. Like how many, how many synchronicities that we have between the two of us and well, I'm sure there's more that we're not going to discover in this chat. <laughs> <laughs> like lifetimes, right? Yes, <laughs> for sure. So what kind of offerings do you give to your clients, to your followers, to your listeners, the people who you interact with? Because I want my audience to be able to know what it is that you do. Because I know that we do some of the same things similar. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I fully believe in, you know, rising with other women. I'm not leaning into con competition by any stretch of the imagination because people who need you are going to find you people who need me are going to find me and yes. there are billions of people in this world being competitive is bullshit and it needs to stop women listen to me this is more to women than men <laughs> yeah absolutely you cannot take from someone what is meant for them and no one can take anything that is meant for you correct. it's impossible correct yeah so I, I agree so what do i do or how do i work there are a few different ways. What seems to be people's favorite, I guess I would say, is the private one-to-one -one sessions. And in those sessions, I can't, again, it's hard to explain because every single person has something different that they need. Mm -hmm. So I don't work from, I have a protocol that when you come to me, we do A, B, C, and D, because that not, might not be what you need. So how I work is when we come together, I connect with the person's energy and their body starts talking to me and telling me all of the things, all of the experiences, the traumas, what's going on physically. Then to my right, all of their guides come in. So their guides will start talking to me and they'll tell me all the things that that person isn't aware of and mm -hmm. where they could get support and love. And then my guides come in. And so it's this conversation where we talk your body talks, your guides talk, my guides talk, and then I'm shown exactly where the root causes are and what needs to happen in order to shift them. And that could be something as simple as some mindset work, you know, doing, creating some new neural pathways in the brain. It could be going to a past life and clearing an old pattern. It could be generational healing. It could be somatic work within the physical body and regulating the nervous system. I mean, I have a very hefty toolbox from which I can draw, but where we go, I can't say until we're actually in that moment. And I have clients that have been doing these sessions with me literally for over a decade. And every time we get together, it's always, I wonder what's going to happen today. And the running joke is when I start every session, I ask, how can I support you today? And those who have been with me for a while, they just laugh because we're not going to go where you want to go. I know. We're going to go where you need to go. Yes. Cause spirit's going to tell me where you need to yes, go. So you exactly. can buckle up buttercup. Let's go. <laughs> yes. And I always say that working with me, I feel it's probably similar for you. It's not for the faint at heart. No, it is for people who are really truly ready to own their shit, to take their power back and to make massive change in their lives. That's what yeah. I'm here to support. So I do the one-on-ones. I also have a community in which we come together daily if you want um we do live healings we do card readings we set intentions we work with the moon energy there's a forum where we support each other and that is really good for people who are not ready maybe for those massive jumps to yeah. get your feet wet and to experience me and then i teach i do courses 
and meditations and all that sort of stuff as well. So you can work with me starting if you're really curious, but not sure with a quick meditation, a recorded meditation, all the way up to doing the big shifts. It just depends on what you're ready for and where you want to start. I love that. So where can people find you so that they know? So the two places where you can easy, easily find me, my website, melaniehustis.com and on Instagram at Melanie Hustis. It's a rare name. I'm easy to find. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, where is your, where is your community? Is it on your website? It's on my website. And a big reason for that is I'm not here to be edited. I'm not here to be <laughs> told what to talk about and what fucking language to use. Amen. That's why I was so drawn to your Outlook and your podcast specifically. So it's all on a private forum on my website. So no one has control over what happens other than the members themselves. I love that because, you know, everybody wants to try to edit us. They want to try to edit what we say. And, you know, one of the things that I actually did is I started surveying my clients and asking them, you know, does it bother you that I say fuck? And over half of them said to me, that's actually why I was drawn to you because you're authentic and you're real and you don't care. And I'm like, yes, yes. that's why <laughs> I was drawn to you for exactly that reason. I, I found that. you first on Instagram and I just love that you showed up and you were just yourself and you talked about what was on your mind. And if every single person just showed up unapologetically yeah. as themselves, the world would look radically different. It would. And I love that you are, because you have the same approach to doing, um, I don't know if you call it coaching or mentoring, but the one-to-ones, your approach is mm-hmm. exactly like mine, which is you can't have this cookie cutter, A, B, C, D, here's how we go. Yeah. Humans are not cookie cutter. Our trauma is different. The pace that we're willing to embrace it is different. Mm-hmm. And not every client is going to need a soul retrieval. Not every client is going to need to do a past life reading. Not every, they don't all need the same thing. Mm-hmm. And you as a coach need to be willing to just flow. And I love that you do that for your clients, which is clearly why you're still doing this for so long, because you're willing to grow and flow with them. Absolutely. And it's beautiful that you do that. Thank you. And what I actually find, I was reminded of this from a a message on Instagram this morning that typically I go through what we'll call a trauma, a dark experience, a really challenging time in my life. And I get through it and I learn what I need to learn and I find my power in it. And then a week or two after it hits the collective. And so part of my showing up to help people heal is that spirit gives it to me so that I have intimate experience about what I'm talking about rather than just, I read a textbook, I got a degree and here, let me show you. Amen. And then when people show up, I'm like, ah, I know exactly how to get through this (laughs) because I just did it. Yeah. And that just happened again with another cycle. So isn't it amazing? Like I literally sit back sometimes and I look and I'm just like, oh my God, spirit, I can't believe that this is what you're doing. Like, I just am amazed every single day at the beauty that they put in my life, even when it's dark, because yes. that's be- that darkness is beauty to me, right? It's like oil, it's rich, it's powerful, and it can provide you and sustain you and give you energy for what you need to do to keep moving forward. Yes, there's purpose in it. Absolutely. And we need to stop ignoring ignoring the darkness and we need to we need to integrate it don't stay separate from it it's part of you reach down you know reach way down in there pull her out let her be your protector guide let her be everything that she needs to be for you i love that i love that and i will say too that when i work with spirit some of my most loving, gentle, and protective guides come from the dark. I love that. Yeah. So a lot of people, again, when they're doing this work, will resist spiritually going into the the lower realms because they want to work with the angels and they want to work with the ascended masters. And that's great. I work with all of them too. 
but there's some pretty potent healers down in that direction. Oh yeah. Are just as beautiful and loving and safe. Yeah. Yes. I don't disagree with you. It's one of the reasons why I really enjoy working with Akate because she just pulls me way down under and goes, let's go. You've got to do all this work. And you know, it's funny. She is not someone I work with on a regular basis, but keeps circling around me. Like <laughs> when you're ready. Hello, we're here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I see you. Hi. And then she'll come back around. Yes. Beautiful. Again, transformative energy. I love that. That's amazing. We are, believe it or not, we are approaching an hour. I just, I don't know where the time has gone. It amazes me being able to have these conversations. So um, I don't want you to have an opportunity where you missed saying something. Is there anything that you would like for people to know about you? Something that you want to share with the world that you normally share? Any bits of wisdom, anything that you want to give out? I think, I mean, we've talked about a lot of it, but I think what I would love to leave everyone with is just that discomfort breeds change. So when we are having those dark nights of the soul, when we are in pain, when things really feel horrible, that is a gift to you. That is spirit. That is your soul, your body, whatever you want to consider it saying, this isn't where you're meant to be. And there is something better for you. And if you can just lean in and reach out and get help if you need to, but lean into that message. What is this pain telling me? What is this discomfort here for? And that's when your most beautiful evolution into the light is going to happen. So just don't resist it. Don't be afraid. Or like you said, be afraid and do it anyways. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you so much for spending your time and giving me an hour of your day to sit with me and chat with me about all of this. I am so excited. I will have all the links posted below this on uh, on the podcast. So anybody who's watching it will be able to find you in all the links. And I strongly encourage you to follow her on all the socials, reach out to her. She does things very much like I do, which is amazing. And it makes me super happy to know that there are other people a lot like me out there doing the same kind of work with the same enthusiasm and love for genuinely just wanting to help people because that's what this is all about, right? Thank you so much, Shelly. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.